Welcome to the worship of the St. Luke Church. We are pleased that you have chosen to be with us. We know that you come from a variety of different places and experiences this week, but we hope that this time together will be a time when your heart and spirit is nurtured, when you know the love of God for you and for all people. I have uh, one announcement that I need to make, which is next week begins Holy Week for us, uh, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday. And we'd like for you to participate with us. We are going to do it uh, virtually again as we continue to, to uh, take care and be careful with uh, individuals in the midst of this pandemic. So we invite you to look online uh, for our upcoming services and, and join us in this holy season. I invite you now to join with me in the call to worship, uh, responding with uh, all the parts that say all. Every week is a new week, another chance to say, here I am, use me. Every day is a new day, another chance to say, thank you for yesterday, thank you for tomorrow. Every hour is a new hour and another chance to say, again and again, make me new. We do not come to this place to stay the same. We come to this place to be changed. So let us worship the Holy One who created yesterday and will create tomorrow, and even now is creating something new. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please hear the opening prayer and feel free to join me in the prayer of confession and the prayer of assurance. Let us take a moment to acknowledge how much space exists between us and God, trusting that even when we forget to seek out God, God is seeking us out. So join me in the prayer of confession as we take one step closer to the divine. Gracious God, we want to see you. We want to be known as Jesus knew the people he encountered. But not only that, we want to be people who have your covenant written on our hearts. Why do we feel so far away from that at times? What went wrong? Where did we lose our way? Could you, would you, once again, write on our fragile hearts, help us find our way? We would be so grateful. Amen. Friends, despite our wonderings, despite our distractions, despite wrong turns time and time again, we are known and loved by God. Like a lighthouse keeper by the sea, God will never stop lighting the way home. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Our fragile bones are held by the great creator. Our fragile hearts are loved by the great creator. Our tender spirits 
are forgiven by the great Creator. Today is a new day, another day, to experience God's grace. Again and again, we are forgiven. Again and again, we are reformed. Thanks be to God. Amen. join together in our prayer for understanding so that we might experience the scripture in their fullness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Take us back to the beginning. Remove the self-taught talk that distracts. Clear away the cobwebs of doubt. Show us how to look inside ourselves for your truth to discover again what you have written on your heart, on our hearts. We are listening. We are hopeful. We are here. Speak now. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the prophet Jeremiah, reading in the 31st chapter. Listen for God to speak to you. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I had made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm happy to take this time with our young disciples. It's an opportunity for me to speak to just you about uh, some of the things that we heard in the scripture today. And I wanna talk specifically about God's promise to write on our hearts, the message God has for us. In the prophet Jeremiah, it was a reminder to keep the commandments that God promises to be our God and we are God's people. But God often uses our heart as a way to speak to us. So this morning I thought I would just do something a bit more creative. I've drawn a heart here 
And I'm going to put in this heart some of the words I think God is inviting me to remember and think about this day. And of course, one of them is love. God always is reminding me to be loved, to love others, to remember that I'm loved. And then one of the other things that God always puts in my heart is joy. Uh, God invites me to pay attention to the world and to my family and to the people that I meet and how they help me to experience joy. Uh, I think also in our heart, in my heart today, is God's invitation to grow. Um, it's the season for things to start blooming and growing, and God is reminding me that I also am invited to grow, to be changed um, by my experience of God and by my, uh, my experience in the world. God is also inviting me to think about justice these days. So I'll put that in there too. To remember that not everybody experiences justice and that I have some power to bring that justice to others. One of the other things God is inviting me to think about is trust. To trust in God. To remember that God can be counted on. Um... And then I think one of the others is maybe peace or rest um, to make sure that I take time to be at peace with myself and with others. So I've created a little card to take out with me today in my pocket to pull out from time to time and remember those things that God has written on my heart, those messages that God is sending to me to encourage me and to support me, and sometimes even to challenge me. It was good to be with you today. Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John. This uh, particular story happens after Jesus has already entered Jerusalem on that final week, and he is engaging his uh, disciples in some final preparations, some final teachings, and uh, we have this story about some Greeks seeking Jesus. Listen for God to speak to you. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip then went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. And whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. 
I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing near heard it and said that it was thunder. And others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come to you for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Again, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So a few years back here, probably many now, more than I want to think about, I had the opportunity, Amy and I, to go down to uh, meet Jimmy Carter and get one of his books signed down at the Marshall Field store in town. We were very excited about this. Uh, both of us had admired Jimmy Carter for a long time and appreciated his style of leadership and his faithfulness and the way he expressed his faith. We were very, very excited and we got up early so that we could go down and get in line now, we needed the books, so we stopped at the half-price books or the discount bookstore along the way and bought the book there, and then went and got at the back of the line a very, very long line. We chit-chatted with the people around us, both about Jimmy Carter and about what was happening in the city and the weather, as we waited and waited and waited. When we got close to the front, one of the store supervisors asked to see our receipts for our books to see if they were truly bought in Marshall Fields. And of course we didn't. And I felt like this was unfair because it said nowhere that the books had to be purchased at Marshall Fields. And even as we entered the line, no one mentioned to us that it had to be. And we were so excited to see Jimmy Carter and here we were being pulled out of the line. And I have to admit, I might have gotten a little loud with my disappointment. Pretty soon, Amy and I are surrounded by these guys in dark suits with earpieces in, Secret Service people, saying very politely to me, ma'am, step out of the line. Step out of the line. So of course I did as they asked, and they said, go and buy a book here in Marshall Fields and come back. We'll get you back to the beginning of the line. And in fact, we did get to see Jimmy Carter. We got our books signed, and we went away very, very happy that day. This story came to mind as I was thinking about these Greeks who come to see Jesus. We do not know if they were Jewish Greeks or proselytes or whether they were pagans. We just know that they are Greeks and they're longing to see Jesus. Now, we're not sure what they heard about Jesus, but something has prompted them to come and seek out Philip and Andrew and ask if they can make this arrangement happen. And so Philip and Andrew cautiously approach Jesus saying, there are folks here that want to see you. And Jesus responds with this kind of weird answer of, the hour has come, it's time. Of course, Jesus is talking about the time for him to fulfill all that has been intended and planned for him. Philip and Andrew, and perhaps even the Greeks who are standing by don't understand, and Jesus goes on to tell them a parable. He tells them how the wheat must die and the seed fall into the earth so that it can be grown into something fruitful and benefit. He's talking once again about his death, 
but not just his death, his resurrection and his ascension. God is to be glorified in these events. Jesus is to be lifted up and God's plan for our world is to be fulfilled. Yet like uh, the disciples and perhaps like the Greeks, we're still a bit confused at this point as to why this is a necessity. Why must Jesus go to the cross? Jesus and we have been talking a lot about his dying through this Lenten season. That's not unexpected because, of course, Lent leads us to the cross, prepares us for the cross. And the cross is what brings about the good news of Easter morning and of Jesus being lifted back up to God. Indeed, in these pandemic times, we've been talking a lot about dying. And as people that we know and we don't know die because of this virus and also die from other illnesses and from old age and from accident, we are invited to reflect on our own dying. And not just the dying of our physical bodies, but the things that we are called to let go of, to uh, consider life in a new way, in a different way. So in this pandemic time, we have had to let go of gathering in large crowds and even small crowds. We've had to let go of our weekly routines. We've had to let go of some of our relationships, or at least the way we're used to being engaged with them. We've had to let go of people we love, traditions that we love, you see, change and growth is always about dying and letting go. This is part of God's way of recreating the world. Just as Jesus shared in the parable, the only way that the wheat can produce any fruit is if it dies and changes. Jesus is offering us an alternative way to think about our life now and to engage in the life that God offers. This alternative way is in opposition to what he refers to as the world or the worldly ways. Ways of consumerism, ways of overpowering rather than empowering, focusing on the individual rather than remembering the community focusing on our differences rather than remembering and celebrating the glorious way that God has made us all. Indeed, Jesus is offering us an alternative way to think about life, a life that means sacrifice for ourselves and for others, that means using power in a different way, So I'm wondering a little bit as I stand here today, what are some of the things in your life, my life, that perhaps need to be changed? What are the things that have changed already that may become more permanent parts of the life going forward? Before the pandemic, it was easy to care for our families and our friends. If they were in need, we brought something to them. If they were lonely, we visited with them. If they were uh, without, uh, if they were sick in any way, you know, we brought them that we brought them to the doctor or we brought them the medicine that they needed. And during this pandemic time, we have had to think more deeply about how we care for people. I'm not sure, but I'm imagining that there has been an increase in phone calls and card sending and emails. Because rather than just dropping by, we had to be more intentional about checking in. 
Maybe that's not a bad change. I surely look forward to the time when we will be able to gather again and sit face to face with our beloved. But I'm also grateful for the more intentional ways I have to be caring of those around us. In the midst of this pandemic, we have been challenged by racial injustice. And we've been invited to reflect on our own participation in larger systems that contribute to racism. Perhaps we wouldn't have had the time to do this thoughtful uh, reflection. Perhaps we wouldn't have had the time to read some books or watch some programs that have helped us to understand how racism works in our countries and in our communities and in our own lives. We've been locked up, so to speak, for a year, and I heard the story of a gentleman who has just been released from prison at 87 after having been uh, sentenced when he was 15. He was sentenced because of mandatory rules to life without parole. And it was only the action of a, a faithful lawyer and a governor that has freed him. And in that time of waiting and being locked up, he became remorseful and sought forgiveness and was changed. The challenge for us in this story is why was it necessary for him to be in prison that long? Why could we not see the capacity for transformation, for rebirth in this young man? Why are we so caught up in being punitive in our justice system rather than restorative or regenerative? I don't know whether you all are thinking about these things in this pandemic time. I don't know what changes you're making in your life during this lockdown. But I do know that Jesus is calling all of his disciples to a new way of thinking about life. To love God is to love the neighbor as ourselves, we are told. This is the law that has been written upon our hearts. This is the work that we are being called to, and sometimes that work requires change, letting go, dying to old ways of thinking and being. Indeed, God is glorified when we as a people resist and reject the ways of the world, and rather follow the one who would even go to the cross so that we might experience new life, new possibilities, new hope. Remembering that the cross was only part of the plan. For by God's grace, Jesus is raised and returned to God to be our advocate and our teacher and our guide. In this Lenten season, in this pandemic time, in each day that we have been given, we are invited to choose the ways of God or the ways of the world. Again and again and again. Amen. Please hear and feel free to join me in the affirmation of faith. We believe that flowers need the rain. We believe that humans need community. We believe that bodies need rest. We believe that hearts need connection. We believe that mornings need sunrise. We believe that seasons need change. We believe that grief needs space. 
We believe that change needs time. We believe that love needs truth. We believe that pain needs art. We believe that joy needs company. We believe that our spirits need God. Again and again, our spirits need God. Fortunately for us, we trust that God is here. God is at work in our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, Jesus is offering us an alternative life, an abundant life, a life where there is blessing and enough for all, an independent life, a communal life that respects all of God's creation and understanding and love in service and justice. Again and again, God meets us where we are and leads us into the ways that bring recreation and eternal life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, let us go out with courage, with heart, with love. Let us go with peace. Amen. <laughs>